this is a lecture 21 on drag force calculations. Today we're going to talk about, first we're going to talk about the uh, drag force formula. Uh, and then we're going to do drag force calculations. And we have an example uh, here of drag on a sphere in creeping flow. And I think that's it. Oh, we'll have another example of drag on a sphere in inviscid flow. All right, and the reading that goes with today's lecture uh, is in Dean. Um, it is 6.6. .6. Uh, 8.3 and 9.2 okay and 6.6 .6 has some stuff about uh, force calculations especially on page 152 to 154 all right so let's get going so first drag force formula okay um, so we can use, um, we, we wrote down a formula uh, for forces uh, when we have a stress tensor a couple of days ago. So the formula we wrote down for forces was F equals A N dot sigma. All right. Um, and sometimes we want to uh, uh, have, you know, an area that's complicated. So we can write this as a differential DF. All right, and then that equals n dot sigma dA, and then we'll just integrate. So if we integrate both sides, dF, okay, that's going to give us F, what we want, and that's going to be then the integral over some area of n dot sigma dA. Okay, and now remember, okay, remember, all right, um, that sigma, the total stress tensor, is equal to minus delta P, where that was the identity matrix, um, plus tau, the viscous stress tensor. So we plug that in, we can expand our force formula. We talked a little bit about this uh, several lectures ago, but I'm just going to go over this one more time. Okay. Uh, n dot delta p dA plus <clears throat> a n dot tau dA. Okay, and this guy gets simple, uh, gets simpler, which is minus the integral of screw down a little bit more of n p dA plus integral over the area of n dot tau dA. All right, sorry if my handwriting is poor, I'm doing my best here. Okay, so this is our um, force formula. All right, I'll try and put a box around it. All right, so um, we, we'd like to be able to calculate the drag. So I think we're going to do a couple examples today where we have a sphere. Okay, and we've got some flow around the sphere, all right? And in some coordinate system, this might be the z direction down this way. I'm trying to think, um, let's see, x, y, so x, y, so this would be y. I'll do the right hand rule, all right? Um, and so if we want to find the force in the z direction, we're going to do f dotted with the unit vector for the z direction, okay? And carrying that through, we're going to get minus integral over an area, 
n dot oops n dot easy p a plus and then we'll have um, n dot tau dot easy da. Okay, so now this is just going to be our drag force, right, in the z direction. Remember that we would say that the drag, you know, if, if the velocities are coming in here, the drag is in that direction, lift would be in that direction. So the lift would be f dot ey, that would give us lift, okay, whereas f dot z gives us drag. All right. So, and then look at this. Remember, I said this before, but this is key. Okay, this is our pressure drag. This is pressure drag. Right, and this is our friction drag. Right, so we can calculate both those components. So when we said way back when, when we talked about drag coefficients for the first time, all right, these actually have mathematical pieces. They're two different parts of the variable, one with the pressure, and one with the viscous stresses that give rise to the friction drag. All right, so um, let's do a quick example. Um, we want to uh, simplify this formula, simplify uh, the drag force formula. Okay, using these unit vectors. So let's say that I've got, let's see if I can do the pages here. Um, I'll just leave that in. Sorry about that. I was going to see if I could connect them so this example doesn't span a page, but we'll just let it be. All right, let's say I have just a surface here. If I could draw something straight. And this is the normal vector from that surface. And let's say now that I've got something here where I've got z here and um, I'm going to make this x because that was what I did in my example and y is into the board. So y into the page. I think that obeys the right hand rule. x, y, z. Yep, that does. You can, I'm doing it in my, you know, but I'm not showing you. Uh, all right, and we're going to say the width in that y direction is w. All right, so now I want to calculate, you know, I'm going to use this formula right here. And I want to say, I want to calculate the drag force, okay? Uh, and I want to know which components of tau are going to come out of this dot product and what's going to happen here. So uh, I'll write down, so if I have the drag force that's going to equal minus 0 to L, 0 to W, N dot EZ, the pressure is a function of X and Y, dx, dy. So that's the first part, and then I have, that's the pressure, right? Oh, that's not giving me enough space. Let me just uh, give myself a little more space down here. Uh, plus, I'm going to have another double integral, 0 to L, 0 to W, of n dot tau of x, y dot ez dx dy. All right, and now n is going to equal what? n is the unit vector that I have in my picture here, and if z is in that direction, then n is going to be minus ez, because it's going minus of the z direction. Okay, so now I just need to plug in n into this formula, so I'm going to do n dot ez, that'll be the one up here. That's going to be ez dot, excuse me, minus ez dot ez, which is going to be minus 1. And then 
that's this first one. I'll call that one A. I'll call this one B. So I'll come down here. So A, that'll be B. Now I'm going to do n dot pow dot ez, which is going to be ez dot pow dot ez. Okay, that's going to, or excuse me, I keep forgetting that's a minus somewhere. Minus ez dot tau dot ez. That's going to give me minus tau zz. Okay, we can do it out if we forget. Okay, we can do zero, zero, one. And then I have tau here, tau uh, x, x, etc. Tau x, z, tau y, x, tau y, x, tau y, tau y, z, tau z, y, tau z, z. And I'm going to do this by 0, 0, 1. Okay, and I can do out this matrix multiplication. Doing that matrix multiplication, i got to pick which side to do first. So I'll pick this side. So I go 0 times that, uh, 0 times that, 1 times that. So I'm going to pick out the bottom row. I'm going to have tau z x, tau z y, tau z z. Okay, don't forget the minus sign. And then 0, 0, 1. And that's going to pick that times that, that times that, that times that, is minus tau z z. Okay, so uh, I can always go back and do this multiplication and get that guy. Okay, so now finally I've simplified my drag force formula. Drag force formula is 0 to L, 0 to W, of uh, minus, so now I have to go back to this guy right here. So I had minus 1 here, minus... So that becomes, oops, there's that guy, maybe zoom out a little bit, just so we can see that whole thing there, All right? So this is going to be uh, P, X, Y, D, X, D, Y, okay? And then now I have N dot tau, etc., and I have a minus sign right there. So this should be uh, minus tau zz. Let me roll tau zz. So here, minus 0 to l, 0 to w, tau zz, x, y, dx, dy. Okay? So that's how we simplify these drag force formulas. It gets more complicated if you have... Uh, something that's not in Cartesian coordinates, but uh, we're not going to do those. Yay for us. All right, so let's do some drag force calculation. Drag force calculations. Let's zoom back in. All right, so what are the steps in doing drag force calculations? So step one is we need a solution for the velocity and the pressure. Okay, so like I said last time, these will be in the book, okay, or given, okay. Um, for drag problems, um, they all give us PDEs, you know, so uh, partial differential equations, um, so I'm not going to ask you to solve any PDs. We just do ODs. Okay, part two is simplify the drag force formula. Oops, take the eraser formula for the coordinate system. All right, and um, in your homework you have some uh, that are uh, not Cartesian coordinates, but I already simplified it for you. So you should be able to know how to do these in Cartesian coordinates, and if not, I'll give them to you, right? So three is you need to find the parts of tau, okay? And this you need velocity derivatives to do. Velocity derivatives. All right, so you're going to take the velocities you have up here, you're going to take derivatives, and you're going to use those parts of tau. 
that the drag force formula that you've simplified says that you need. All right. And then step four is you do the integrals. Okay, so that's how we do drag force calculations. So now we're going to spend pretty much the rest of our time doing two examples of drag force calculations. So let me add another page here, All right? And we'll do our examples. So, A. Example one, just drag on a sphere in creeping flow. Remember that creeping flow was when the Reynolds number is small, much less than one. All right, so the solution, so we'll do the steps here. So we need this solution. And the solution is given in example at 8.3-2 in your book, Dean which is on page 201 to 204. Uh, so you can see how they solve that there if you're interested. Um, so the solution is as follows. I'll write it. The R theta is equal to U times, let me make sure, 1 minus 3 halves, big R over R, plus one half r over big r over little r cubed cosine theta. And I just realized that I forgot to um, see can I select this guy, move it down. I forgot to draw our geometry here. So let me go back up here and go back to tool back to my pen tool here. So I want to just draw our geometry because I'm realizing I'm using it, right? So we've got sphere here. We've got U coming in. Our radius of our sphere is R, big R. That's the big R I'm using down there, okay? And this is the direction we're going to care about drag, right? Um, but we're really going to be using um, spherical coordinates here. So this direction... Uh, out there is little r, okay, and then going around this way uh, is our theta, all right. So, um, and then our governing equations for creeping flow, you'll remember, are uh, Stokes equations minus grad p plus mu grad squared v, all right, and zero is uh, this is our continuity equation, delta p zero. Right, and this will give us, this is for creeping flow, these are our assumptions here, creeping flow, and it's uh, axisymmetric, excuse me, which means that anything in the phi direction, okay, v phi equals zero, now I've gone and done that, let's see, v phi equals zero, all right. So, okay, so back to this, back to our solution. So I said, this is VR. So now I'm going to have uh, V theta of R theta is equal to minus U, 1 minus 3 fourths. It looks very similar, but slightly different. R over R minus 1 fourth big R over little r cubed sine theta. Right, and then we have pressure, P of R, P of R and theta is minus three halves mu U over R times big R over little r squared cosine theta. Okay, so that's step one, get a solution. Step two is get a drag force formula. Drag force formula. So in this case, we're doing spherical coordinates. All right, and those are kind of hard. So, but there's actually, uh, in your book, equation 
3-38, um, which is on page 205. Not the best writing ever. Um, that didn't work. Do write that 8 there. 8. Sorry, I'm using this old pad. I don't have some nice screen to write on, so it's kind of hard for me to write here. So I apologize for the handwriting. Okay, but they have the equation in spherical coordinates. Um, and this is for a solid sphere. They make us another simplification. So the one in your homework is for not a solid sphere. Uh, just watch out for that. Okay, so here this is minus 2 pi r squared integral over 0 to pi of p r theta. Notice that's a big r, so it's evaluated at the radius cosine theta plus tau r theta at r theta. Again, big r sine theta right and then these are in square braces and this is a sine theta d theta so that's the integral that we're going to have to do to do the drag force calculation so there was presumably an r dr but it was evaluated at big r so there it is right there that's just 2 pi r squared right um, and then this is our integral over theta so essentially think here we're integrating around you know the edge of this sphere and it's axisymmetric, so we didn't need to worry about that. That's our 2 pi, and then we have this r squared. Right? So that's our drag force formula. Step 3. Uh, now we need to um, get p uh, big R theta. So we need to get this guy, and we need to get tau r theta at r theta. Okay, and so this is what I said before. We're going to need the derivatives for that. So p r theta is pretty easy. If we just take this expression for p right here, plug in a big R, we're going to get r over big R squared. That's going to go to 1, right? And we're just going to get this guy in that. So that one's pretty easy. And that's pretty indicative of pressure. Pressure is usually simple because we don't have to take any derivatives of it. So we get p at r big R theta is equal to minus 3 halves mu u over big R uh, cosine theta. So the harder one, we zoom back out here, is we're going to have to take the derivatives that we need for there. So what derivatives are we going to need? So we need to go look up what tau r theta is. So we can go look that up. That's in table 6.6 .6 in your book. So that's r d dr v theta over r plus 1 over r dvr theta. Close break. So I said that's in table 6.6 .6 on page 143 in your book. So remember this is the viscous shear stress. So now we just have to do these different derivatives. So I'll do different parts of them. Two, one, Just need to do two different derivatives. Page three, page five. Okay, so here we go. Do the different derivatives. So first one there. We need to do R D D R of V theta divided by R. So R D D R. Then we need V theta. So we need to write down that guy right there divided by r. So I'll write it down. Sorry you can't see it. It's kind of hard to, to manage on the screen here. So that's a minus u times 1 over r minus 3r divided by 4 little r squared minus big r cubed divided by 4r to the fourth sine theta. And we're taking the derivative of all of that to there. Right? So now just have to evaluate the derivative, which is minus u sine theta. And then taking the derivative 
So I just pulled the minus u sine theta out. I'll drive it up there. It's going to give me negative 1 over r squared minus a negative 2 times 3r over 4r to the fourth. I'm going to go down another line down here. Minus minus 4 uh, r cubed divided by 4r to the fifth. And close that brace. <clears throat> All right. Um, so I can simplify a little bit. It's going to give me, if I multiply through by that r, it gives me minus u sine theta minus 1 over r plus 3r over 2r to the third. Uh, this should have been not a fourth here, should it? That's a mistake, isn't it? That should have been a third, excuse me. So this should have been a third here, there, and this one should be a squared. So this one came because I took this r to the minus 2, should be minus 2 r to the minus 3, and then when I multiplied through by r, that should give me r squared. So sorry about that. All right, and then plus uh, r cubed divided by r to the fourth. All right, that simplifies it, All right? And then what's going to happen now is we're going to, uh, well, now we'll do part two. This, this derivative is a lot easier. We have 1 over r dvr d theta, and that's going to be 1 over r of d d theta of this guy, which I'll remind you was 1 minus 3 halves, big R divided by little r, plus 1 half, big R over little r cubed, and then there's a u cosine theta. So here, now this, all this stuff is this, this constant with respect to theta, so I just have the derivative of cosine theta which is a minus sine theta. So now I'm going to have a minus uh, u sine theta and then I'll multiply the 1 over r through. So I have 1 over r minus 3 big R over uh, 2 little r squared plus uh, big R cubed over 2 uh, R to the fourth, right? And now if I look back up at my formula here, I'm tau R theta okay, is mu times the sum of those. So now I can do that. Tau R theta is mu times, and this has a, u sine theta minus u sine theta, and that has a minus u sine theta, so minus u sine theta bracket, and I'll just write these down, minus 1 over r plus 3 big R over 2 little r squared plus r cubed divided by r to the fourth. All right, now this one, plus 1 over r, minus 3 big R over 2 R squared plus R cubed over 2 R to the fourth. Okay, so that one cancels with that one, and that one cancels with that one, and this here, I'm now going to have a 3 halves. So tau R theta is equal to minus 3 halves mu u sine theta, and then I have uh, r cubed over r to the fourth. So now I want to evaluate it at the wall or at the edge of the sphere, big r theta. And if I plug that in, I'm going to get a 1 over r in the bottom. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit. I actually think I want to give myself a little more space there. Tau r theta, big r theta is equal to minus 3 halves mu u sine theta all divided by r. 
Okay, so now we're almost done. Now we just need to do step four, which was evaluate our integrals. All right, so we can do them in parts if we want. Um, so we'll do this, we'll do the pressure drag part first. And the pressure drag part was F, D, I'll call this comma P. Oh man, my F's are getting worse. F, D, comma P. And this will be minus 2 pi r squared. This is an integral from 0 to pi, right? And we need our pressure, which we which was right here, minus 3 halves. Uh, oh, excuse me. It was down farther. We got P right there, right there. Minus 3 halves mu over r cosine theta. So now we'll put that in here. It's minus 3 halves mu u over r uh, cosine theta. We have mu for cosine theta, right? And then the other parts of the integral formula were up here. So there was another cosine theta and a sine theta. So we'll have a cosine squared sine theta to theta. So now we just have to do an integral. We can cancel out some stuff. So the two cancels there and an R cancels there and we get minus three pi uh, r u u and zero to pi of cosine squared theta sine of theta to theta. All right, I'm not going to bore you by doing u substitution, but you could do u substitution here, and that will give you two thirds on that integral. So now two thirds. The drag here is going to give you minus. Uh, uh, 2 pi mu u r. Okay, perfect. So that's our drag for the pressure. Oops, my p got pretty big. Box ish around that. Now we'll do the friction drag. Okay, and that one's F D, I'll call it comma tau. That's minus two pi r squared integral from zero to pi. And now we're gonna plug back in the tau r theta that we had right there. So that's gonna be looking up here minus three halves u u divided by r. And this one has a sine theta. Okay, now we need to go back to our drag formula up here. And the drag formula had a sine theta and a sine theta. So that's going to have a sine cubed d theta. All right, so similar game here. The twos will cancel. And we're going to get an R that will cancel. We'll have a minus 3 pi mu u R integral from 0 to pi of sine cubed theta d theta. Right? And again, don't bore you with math, but this gives you 4 thirds. So you can go to Wolfram Alpha or do a symbolic solver somewhere, and do it numerically, and find out that's 4 thirds. All right, so now this gives us minus 4 pi mu u r. That's f d tau. All right, so now what's our total drag coefficient? Well, our total drag coefficient is just the sum of these, right? So the total drag coefficients minus 2 minus 4 minus 6 pi mu u r. 
we did it. We did a drag calculation. And I said the whole point of this was to be able to do um, a drag coefficient. So can we calculate the drag coefficient? How can we do that? What is the drag coefficient? So the drag coefficient, I'm going to go back. I think I had zoomed out, never zoomed back in. Maybe that's why my views will maybe help me write a little cleaner here. The drag coefficient is the drag force, the absolute value of the drag force, divided by the projected area, divided by 1 half rho u squared. Okay, why is that brings up, so why did I say absolute value? This one's negative. Why is it negative? Well, it's going in the minus z direction, right? So if I go scroll all the way back up here, z was in that way, the drag force is going back that way, right? The drag force is minus. So that's why it's minus sign. It's a good thing. It comes out like that. Okay, so now I just have to plug this in. So the drag is 6 pi u u r and I'm going to divide by projected area pi r squared and I'm going to divide by 2 over or multiply by 2 and multiply by rho u squared. Okay, now just start canceling. So the squareds cancel there. The 2 times the 6, that's going to give me a 12, uh, 12 pi's will cancel. I have 12 mu divided by rho u r. Well, that's the same thing as 24 mu over rho u d, where d is the diameter. And that right there is the Reynolds number. Right? So that is the same thing as the drag coefficient is 24 divided by the Reynolds number. That is what we derived the laminar, or that is what we said earlier in class for the laminar uh, flow over a sphere. We did it. Okay? We found it. That's awesome. All right. So that was our first example. So you have a problem very similar in your homework. So uh, if you need to, you can go back and rewatch. Hopefully this format is okay. It's probably uh, worse than it is in class because I can't answer any questions. Um, but hopefully you'll be able to go back and rewatch some of it. All right. So now we're going to do another example. We're going to do drag on a sphere in inviscid flow. That is our last example. Okay, so same geometry. Got some average velocity out here. Okay, I thought this is r equals big R at that spot. Okay, this is my z direction I'm defining. Okay, and notice out here this is zero. This is inviscid. Uh, inviscid and irrotational. Okay, so I have no vorticity out here, but I said before, I said Kelvin's theorem was if it starts out uh, irrotational, it stays irrotational. Okay, so my governing equations here are going to be Laplace's equation, um, where the velocity can be get gotten from the velocity potential. So this is called uh, potential flow. Sometimes, or sometimes it's called ideal flow. It's also axisymmetric. Okay. All right. So what are we going to do here? So we do our four steps again. We need our solution. Um, this one is not in your book, uh, but I did it for you. You're welcome. Um, so the example in your book of 9.2-1 um, is for a cylinder. So just be cautious of that. Okay, my notes um, are for a sphere. 
Okay, and they will be posted online next to this lecture. So see my notes for Sphere if you want to see. They're, they're the same steps, but I actually just did it for Sphere so we could do Sphere for both. So here's the solution. VR is U cosine theta 1 minus big R over little r cubed. As you know, my notes are fun. It's fun to do the little derivation. That's why I'm a professor, because I enjoy doing things by solving PDEs. Okay, so 1 plus, this is the solution for V theta, 1 over big R over little r cubed. Okay, that's a cube, that's a 3 for a cube. Okay, and then the pressure, PR theta, is equal to 1 half rho u squared. And then there's a big R over a little r cubed. And there's kind of this funky stuff over here. So this one, 2 minus 4 sine squared theta minus r over r cubed. I'm just glad you didn't have to drag that. Most of you probably are. Okay. 2 is our drag force formula. Okay, this is the same as last time, um, except now there's going to be no friction drag. So why is there no friction drag? Well, this is in viscid flow. I said there's no friction around uh, in this flow at all. There's no viscosity. So, uh, you know, if I have uh, tau r theta is mu something, okay, uh, I'm essentially taking the viscosity to zero. So there's no viscous forces. That makes this problem easier. So I've got the drag force is equal to minus 2 pi r squared, 0 to pi, and all I have now is p r theta cosine theta sine theta d theta. All right, so now I 3 is way easier, so I don't have to, you know, I'm going to get a p of r and theta. I don't have to do um, tau derivatives. Yes, much easier. So I do P R theta. So I plug in up here. So R over R, that goes to 1. That one goes to 1. All right. And then I can cancel a 2 here. So I'm going to get a uh, rho u squared um, uh, times 2 minus, or excuse me, Just say that you cancel that too, right? Um, 1 minus 4 sine squared theta. And I'm looking at my notes here thinking maybe I made a mistake. Did I make a mistake in my notes? If I wrote 1 half, I can't have another half. So I hope that's right. Well, I'll go back and check. It's not going to matter anyway, as we'll see the factor of one half if I screwed it up. Um, it's not going to matter. Okay, so now four, you'll see why. It's not clear at this stage. Now we just have to do our integral. Right? So now we take this pressure, plug it into that guy, and we're going to go ahead and do it. So I'll write down the formula. So the drag calculation is equal to minus 2 pi r squared. And my integral from 0 to pi. Oh no. I should have left myself a little more space. It's pretty convenient to be able to do stuff like that. Drag. Go back to my pen tool. There we go. All right. Uh, and now I plug in um, rho u squared 1 minus 4 sine squared theta. And then I have cosine theta sine of theta d theta. All right. So now pull stuff out. I get 
minus 2 pi r squared rho u squared, and I'm going to have an integral from 0 to pi of 1 minus 4 sine squared theta cosine theta sine theta u theta. All right, so then you plug this in, and guess what? This is 0. It's not a some fraction, it's 0. So wait a minute. Drag force is 0. Okay, what? What just happened? I said in creeping flow, I got the drag force. I got the drag coefficient. You know, this was for laminar flow, right? Okay, in viscid flow, I go up to a high Reynolds number, and we had a drag coefficient before, remember, in class? We had, uh, you know, CD was something like 0.445. So now I have a drag force of zero. What is going on? All right, so this, this is called uh, D'Alembert's paradox. D'Alembert paradox. All right, and you're gonna have to wait until next time to find out what, uh, what's going on, okay? So that's our lecture for the day. We did cliffhanger. Why is the drag force zero? We'll have to wait and see.